Couch, dog, me, palaisant. Hey there, Ligon Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another installment in the Never Ending Fingerstyle Rhythm Pattern Exercise video series all designed to make you a better fingerstyle player and overall musician. Every week we alternate between beginner, intermediate and advanced fingerstyle lessons. This week it's time for another intermediate lesson and we can call this the Creativity Special because today I prepared four special exercises that you can take and really uh, elaborate on. You can take those exercises, I'm gonna show you the exercises and the patterns, and then I'm gonna show you what you can do with them, and then it will depend on how far you're willing to go with your compositional skills and improvisational skills. Even if you think you don't have any, trust me, you do. You just need to know a few tricks. So that's what I'm gonna show you today. So we can call this the creativity special. Um, so the first exercise, is something like this. I say something like this because, again, we're gonna change it. So it's something like this. Again. Right? I played it two different ways on purpose. The idea here is this. Uh, you take a D chord and we're gonna play the D scale, but with C instead of C sharp for the D7 sound. Okay, when you play D7, you have C. And for D, you have C sharp, and I'm gonna show you this as one variation you can use. So for D, you start with um, the D string as your D bass, and then you have three to zero on A, three to zero on E. Okay, now what did I do? I did something like this. Okay, the pattern I was using is this. D, okay, D string, zero on the fourth string, and then three notes of the chord. Any three notes, strings one, two, and three, in any sequence you want. Okay. Anything works. I'm not gonna tell you what to do. Three notes. One, two, three. Or if you want, one, two, three, four. Uh, including the bass. Then three on the A string, and again, three notes. Then two, three notes. Okay, and for this, I let go of the first uh, finger off of the third string. Yeah, this uh, creates kind of a B minor 6 sound, uh, and then put the finger back on, play the A bass. Okay, three notes again. So, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Then uh, three on the sixth string, the E string, and two notes afterwards. Okay, and then the same with two on the sixth string, you can do it with your thumb. Then one note after the open sixth string. And then back to D, and you have up to eight eighth notes. Okay? Or just this, and then you start again. So this is the pattern. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, one and back to D. Got it? Um, now, once you're comfortable with playing this in different uh, chord sequences, okay, and um, by chord sequences I actually meant note sequences inside the chord, but you got what I meant, um, you can change three on the A string to four on the A string, okay? Uh, four on the A string is of course C sharp, which is the natural seventh of the major, uh, the D major scale. Okay. Okay, so you choose whatever sounds right, or just alternate between them. And the uh, epitome of this exercise is to actually change the sequence of the bass notes and try to create a whole new solo out of them instead of just playing the scale. Let me try. Okay, 
same thing in that. Try not to think about it, just try to listen to it and let your fingers react. Now, I know this is easy when you actually know how to do this, but trust me on this. Try this for a week, you won't believe what a week can do. In a week, you'll be playing something even better than what I just played, okay? If you really put some effort into it, trust your fingers and just let yourself go, okay? You won't believe the results a week can make. Um... So that's the first exercise. Uh, the second exercise is kind of a rhythm pattern um, with a lick superimposed on it. It's this. Okay? The rhythm pattern is this. Okay, kind of a Caribbean rhythm, Caribbean Arabic something crazy like that um, and the um, lick superimposed on it is this okay so let's break it down this is a really nice lick to exercise with um, the improv comes after this lick this is kind of an intro to improvisation um, bar the fifth fret up to the fourth string and add eight on the E string. This is C because um, this is actually the high part of a G shaped bar. So this is a C chord. Um, so um, again, eight, five, five, five. And you play it, you play all four strings. Then you play the E string again. Okay, so it's. Then you play it again all four strings and then you pull off the pinky so it's eight to five then you play strings two three and four okay one last time then you take the barring finger down one fret to four and you play strings two three and four then you add the pinky on uh, 7 on the E string, you play strings 1, 2, 3, and 4. Then you play strings 2, 3, and 4 again. Okay? The rhythm is this. Okay? So to put it in context. Okay? Or... You can do E minor, D, C, and B7. Uh, just play around with those chords and see what you can come up with after you've primed your ears with this little leg. And playing B7 with an open E string. This is kind of a B7 at 11. So, um... Okay, I'm adding the G note, 3 on the E string, uh, just as a transition between each chord. And as you see, instant riff, um, just as a result of playing this rhythm. If I played it in a different rhythm, something completely different than that intro, then I would have thought of something different. So you just see what you can come up with. So that's the second exercise. The third exercise is a bit more bluesy, um, and it involves Travis picking. If you don't know how to Travis pick, I've got a wonderful 20 beginner exercise uh, Travis picking lesson. A lot of people say it's very helpful. So uh, if you don't know how to Travis pick, go watch it and then try this exercise, or just see what you can come up with without Travis picking, which is, again, uh, another aspect of improvisation and composition. The idea is this, C, C chord, and the lick on the C chord is this, okay? It's one on the second string, then four on the second string, then the open E string, then both of these notes again, then one, 
oh. on the second string. Now, uh, afterwards, you go to G and you do kind of the same thing, but let's do it with Travis picking. <laughs> And the uh, improvisational aspect of this is that you can change uh, the lick, play around with uh, the rhythm of the pattern, play around with the duration of the notes, play around with the placement of the notes inside the bar. Okay, just try different uh, things, try to change the lick, but first get comfortable with Okay, now let's move on to the second half of this exercise which is on G You just put on the G bass note with any finger you want um, And um, except for the pinky of course because you need an extra finger so um, the lick is the same with the um, open third string, then three on the same string, then the open second string, then these same two notes again, then the open third string again. So. Okay, you can bend it a bit, okay? can hammer it on uh, also. Yeah, you can try. Um, not sure how good this sounds, Don't, not sure if I like it. Um, and you can also, um, as a variation, come to think of it, you can use the seventh uh, sound, the seventh chord sound. Um, instead of four on the second string, for C you just play three on the the third, so it's okay, same lick, just different notes. And for G, it's three on the fourth instead of the third. Okay, now let's try this without Travis picking and see what we can come up with. Remember, all I'm playing, it's nothing complicated, really. I'm not just saying this. This is really easy if you just allow your fingers to do their thing. Um, the more you think about it, the more you're gonna feel stressed out to produce something good. You don't have to produce something good. It should just be an exercise. Remember, this is an exercise in creativity. It's just the chord notes. That's all it is. And whenever I play something close, to four on the second string or three on the third, I add them, okay? If I play the second string, then I try to play four right after it. Maybe I'll play the second string, then the first, then four on the second string, okay? This might work. Just as a lick, uh, same thing with three on the second string. Okay, playing the second string, then third string, then again, but with three on the set on the third string. That's all it is. Just changing the note which is on the string you have, um, and the same for G. this a bit too far um, but basically what I did was add three on the second string so I have three zero on the second string three zero on the third and three zero on the fourth okay so with the G bass all I did with the thumb was playing the G bass okay and just 
play around with that small fragment of a scale. That's it. Just one bass note. Okay, you don't have to Travis pick it. But again, back to the original uh, um, exercise. Remember this? Okay, or with sevens. This is uh, the best advice that I can give you right now. So uh, this isn't an improvisation lesson. This is an intermediate finger style lesson. Remember, when we do the improv lessons, um, I'll have tons more uh, exercises and tips for you. But let's move on to the fourth and last exercise for this lesson, which is my favorite exercise here uh, out of this bunch. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that it'll be your favorite too, because it's based on one of the Arabic scales and two open strings. So before we jump into the exercise, let me show you the scale. The scale sounds like this. Right? This is our scale. Now, um, it's one, two on the third string. It's all on the third string. One, two, four, five, eight, nine, eleven, twelve. Okay, again, one, two, four, five, eight, nine, eleven, twelve. But Arabic music is very interesting in that um, you can change, you can, you should change the scale as you go along and scales change as the music plays. Uh, so no harm done if you play 7-8 uh, instead of 8-9. Okay, it's just a different makam. Makam is, um, Arabic scales are called makams. So nothing happens if you play 7, even if you play 7-8-9. And even if you play 10 instead of 11, for example. see it just gives it a bit of a different flavor same scale different flavor so before we make this even more complicated let's go back to the original scale one two four five eight nine eleven twelve and start the exercise now um, I warn you it will sound a bit confusing at first but once I demonstrate it you'll get what I'm trying to say this is really a lot of fun and you can actually spend hours with this Trust me, um, you're gonna use the open first and second strings, okay, as your uh, kind of atmospheric pedal notes. You're gonna create a veil of sound using the first and second strings. I'm not kidding, this is actually how it sounds. This is the um, illusion that you get. Um, and we're gonna play a solo on the third string using this scale that I just taught you. And after each note you play, you can play strings one and then two, or two and then one, or just the second string, or just the first string, okay? Depending on the length uh, between your solo notes. Told you it's gonna sound confusing, but let me show you what I mean. Okay? I used uh, mostly strings one and two as my uh, atmospheric pedal notes. And just on one note there, I'm not sure what it was, um, I just used the first string instead of strings one and two. I played the first string by itself. Okay, like this. And then two strings again. And that's basically all there is. Now you can hammer on notes. Okay, uh, you can slide. Just try um, um, a short set of notes first before you jump and try the whole scale. And once you're comfortable with this, try to add 7 and 8 to it. try to add 11 and 12. And 
once you're comfortable with everything, try the whole scale. play all three strings at once. Okay, also works. Um, now, uh, when you choose to change the makam, the scale, um, you'll find that you can really create interesting effects with this. For example, you have one and two, right, on the third string. So that means that if you want the octave, you have 13 and 14. But how can you have 13 and 14 if you have 11 and 12? So instead of playing 11, 12, 13, and 14, just play um, 9, 10, 13, 14. And that's a completely new macam. Uh, you can also play uh, 8. You can still play 8. 8, 9, 10, 13, 14, uh, for example. Uh, just experiment with it. It will sound weird at first, it will feel weird at first, but trust me, again, give it a week and you won't believe the results you get. Okay, A week uh, can, can really make a difference if you try uh, to hear new things. Okay, You won't hear it in a day, maybe you won't hear it in three days, but in a week you will be playing this, I assure you. Different things produce different music. Just try different patterns. By the way, I, I just noticed that I haven't used the seventh fret at all, and I told you you can, so let's see how that sounds before we finish the um, lesson. Okay, just see how that sounds. I just promised you that uh, it works. I just wanted you to see that it works. So uh, before you go, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. There's a ton of lessons here on the channel already and I upload a new one every couple of days or so. So join the Lick and Riff community. We'll be happy to have you. Um, and go download the tab. The link is right below in the description. It's for free. Everything is for free here on Lick and Riff, but you have a donation button right above the tabs. If you want to give something back, everything goes right back into the lessons, into making time to make the lessons, into filming them, editing them it all takes time and effort so if you want to help out with the production you'll be actually helping out with your own guitar education I thank you in advance for every donation you choose to make um, so go have fun let me know how this goes and I'll see you in the next lesson bye for now thanks for watching